I'm Ileana, an undergraduate user student working with Professor Wang and James, a graduate student. We're working to improve the Chem 33 lab course. Today, I'm going to explain the concept of significant figures, focusing on what you need to know for introductory chemistry. Significant figures give you an idea of the precision in the number you report, or the number someone else reports to you. Let me give you an example, showing many different ways in which you can represent the same number. When that number is a measurement, it also describes how certain or precise your results are. If I tell you that the temperature in the lab is 25 degrees Celsius, I can write it in any of the following ways. I can write 25 degrees or I can write 25.0 degrees or I can even write 25.00 degrees and so on. Each of these give you a different implication of how precisely I know the temperature. Because the number has to be rounded at some point, the first one implies that the temperature is definitely between 24 and 26 degrees. So that's an uncertainty of plus or minus 1 degree C. The second one implies that the temperature is definitely between 24.9 and 25.1 degrees. So that's an uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.1. Finally, the third one implies that the temperature is definitely between 24.99 degrees and 25.01 degrees. So that's an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.01 degrees. The significant digits in a measurement consist of all the digits known with certainty plus one final digit which is uncertain or estimated. There are a few simple rules to determine how many significant figures a number has. Let's start with rule number one. Any reported digit except for zero is definitely significant, but only some zeros are. Let's look at an example. The number 256, which I can also write as 256 with a little dot here has three significant figures. Rule number two. All zeros after a decimal point are significant. Let's look at a quick example. 7.0 has two significant Rule number three, zeros between other significant figures are also significant. Let's look at the example 101, which I can also write as 101 dot, has three significant figures. The last rule is that zeros used for spacing the decimal point are not significant. Let's look at another example. The number 0 0.000255 only has three significant figures. But what about the number 6300? Depending on context, this number may have two, three, or four significant figures. To overcome this ambiguity, we can use scientific notation. Let's see how by looking at two different examples. For example, we can say that the brown undergraduate student population is about 6,300 students. However, this number is not very precise. 
The actual number is 6,324 students. Hence, only the first two digits in this number were significant. In order to communicate this concept in a concise and universal manner, we express the number 6,300 in scientific notation. On the other hand, the cost of room and board at City College is exactly $6,300. This number is very precise. Mr. Green will pay exactly $6,300 for his daughter's room and board. He will not pay $6,299 and he will not pay $6,301. Again, to communicate this in a concise and universally understood manner, we can express this number in, a new, in scientific notation. In this case, we will write 6.300 times 10 to the power of 3. This number has four significant figures. Determining the number of digits to report when adding or subtracting is very easy. All you have to do is make sure that the number of decimal places stays the same. A measurement should not gain or lose precision when you perform a simple operation. As a simple example, let's say you measure out 0 0.7, 1, 0, 0 grams of a substance using an analytical balance that has accuracy up to four decimal places. Then we add 0 0.3050 grams of the same substance. And by performing a simple addition, we will obtain 1.0150 grams total. You may notice that the number of significant figures has gone from 4 to 5. Okay, because your precision hasn't changed at all. You still have four decimal places of precision. I can put a title screen between these two things, don't I? When multiplying and dividing, things are a little different. Now you have to consider the number of significant figures and not the number of decimal places. Your product should always have the same number of significant figures as the least that are used at any point in the calculation. The best way to understand this is through an example. energy needed to, to raise the temperature of this mass of water by 7.2 degrees C. If we compute this exactly, we'll get 3.762 kilojoules. However, we cannot add precision and we have to round the product to the same number of significant figures as the least precise number in this operation. In our case, it's a temperature that was given to us to, to two significant figures. As you can see, the number of significant figures is consistent with the precision inherent in the experimental data. Therefore, our final answer has to be 3.8 kilojoules, as expressed in two, two significant figures. So please, follow the rules of significant figures when you write your lab reports. Good luck and enjoy your Chem 33 labs!
If any of this is still unclear, feel free to watch the video again or read the introductory file posted on Canvas.